Welcome back to the third video. Welcome back to, uh, sorry, my mind's a bit tired. Welcome back to lesson number four. So lesson number four, I will be dealing with support and resistance, right? So support and resistance, I will be showing you how we draw our support and resistance levels. Remember guys, this is an advanced course. We don't really focus too much on, um, investing in explaining what support and resistance is we basically just want to do the basic uh, the that wants stuff so i will be showing you how we literally deal with support and resistance in the club everyone in the company and how we literally draw them so how we literally do it is we go to the monthly time frame to track price so if you look at the monthly time frame this is gold by the way um, I will be giving you variables to use uh, for the pairs that I look at. Um, all the pairs and everything will be given to you. Uh, we will have like a PDF sent to you with the list of uh, key levels that we have from the monthly to the weekly. But for the sake of the lesson, you guys need to understand how to draw them. So how we do this is we go to the line charts and we want to check areas in which the market will change direction and that is where we basically mark out our levels so if you look at this right i'm going to look at a level that is pretty much clear to all of us so that we can see uh where price is so i'm going to take the peak of uh this level over here if you look on the right hand side we've got one day one uh we've got 1352.16 so i will try and round this off to 13.50 so I will try and run down to 1350. Um, also, the reason why I am able to round off these levels quicker is because gold has been a pair that I've traded quite a lot. So this is easy for me to know what levels gold is trading in, right? So that's easy. After doing this, you make sure that you lock your lines so that there is no moving of the lines when you get smaller time frames. That is the reason why we're basically like opting to lock the lines. If you go to the to the uh, candlestick chart, you can see how this line sits beautifully and nicely over there. Go back to the line chart, try and find the next line. So here's the trick, guys, right? So here's the trick. Whatever line you find must never be over a thousand pips, right? So it must never be over a thousand pips so this line over here i'm gonna go to settings round it off to 1250 so 1250 to 1350 that's literally a thousand pips so if i go back to the line charts i can see that level is actually quite an important level you can see our market has been rejecting around about that level after i draw my first support and resistance levels i can then copy and paste this different this distance using the price range tool if you want to refer um, on where to find the price range tool, go to the first lesson. That is where we basically dealt with trading view and how to actually locate all the tools that I basically use. So price range tool, select the distance from support to resistance, copy and paste that onto the next level. And then you can basically like find the next level of resistance slash support. Also, the, the logic behind this is that these, the, the market moves in equal ranges. So the reason why we actually use this price range tool is because we're eliminating a lot of work from drawing these key levels because we understand that the market moves in equal ranges. So this is why we are basically opting to use this price range tool to basically like try and find the next levels of support and resistance. You don't have to stress really, just find the first levels of support and resistance and then the next ones are automatically gonna sit on your charts nicely. So if you look at this, we've got like beautiful ranges, equal ranges of support and resistance. You can draw them uh, until current market. Try not to draw like a lot of it because you don't wanna have a cluttered chart where you end up not seeing what is really happening in the market. So this is 1550, I'm sure you guys can see how I round off my levels already. So from 1550, you guys have guessed right, we've got 1650. So I don't even have to use the price range tool anymore if I have gotten used to drawing these levels. So you do see that we've got 1650. After 1650, you can guess the next level will be 1750. So you can just like use your, your head as well, just to like 
find these rounded off levels, it makes it easy for you to even track where the market is trading and you're able to maybe get trades around about these levels. You don't have to kind of like stress out and uh, you know try and figure out levels uh, that are non-existent in your head. So it's very much easier and very much better for you to actually like memorize these numbers because these are rounded off numbers and you can actually familiarize yourselves with these numbers. So 1850, quite a logical number. After 1850, obviously, you've got 1950, right? So that's 1950 to the T, just by using one level of support and resistance from the monthly. So obviously, levels from the monthly would be stronger levels. So I need you guys to brace yourselves and literally uh, try and understand this. If you don't understand it, you can rewind the videos and try and understand everything clearly. So if you look at this, all my monthly levels are here. From 1150, 1250, 1350, 1450, 1650, 1650, 1650, all the way to 1950. So these levels were still accurate around about 2011. We are now in 2020, almost nine years. The same level that the market, you know, influenced on the left is still the same level that is validly working and even active on this level. So we can see that these level can stay on the charts for the longest time. Another thing that I need to mark out is that for every monthly level, you just go to style, go to text story, make sure that you write monthly level and you can basically type out 1650.100 and then you click OK. Make sure that it's on the right. So that's your monthly. Uh, so this is how I would basically mark out mine, 1650.100 per ounce. So this is how I mark out mine. So this is how I basically mark out my levels per ounce. Um, and then I would know that, okay, this is on the monthly. Whatever annotation I have on the right would be on the monthly. Whatever that I have on the left would be on the weekly. So obviously do the same thing to all these lines. I'm not going to invest in that, but do the same thing to all these monthly lines so that you know that we're actually trading past uh, that 1750 level. 1750 hundred uh, per ounce, right? So that's how you basically mark out these monthly levels. And after that, there's an that's the important element and aspect of the monthly levels that you have to note. You literally have to make sure that you put a rectangle tool on the monthly level. Put a rectangle tool there. Um, and then uh, I want to make it the major key levels. So the, the, my major key levels are basically green so that I know when I get to smaller time frames. Again, guys, I need to I need to point this out. My levels are not thick. Just zoom in to the charts and make sure that your lines are as thin as possible because then this is on the monthly. So imagine you come into the daily and this level will just be all over your face and you won't even be able to read the story of price. So make sure that you make them as thin as possible and as neat as possible, honestly. So this one is on the monthly. But after doing that, control C, control V and click the lock button that automatically locks this one that you drew. And you can just drag this one across the other levels. So you can just drag this across the other levels. After doing that, you can control C, control V, lock and then drag this to the next level and continue doing the same thing over and over again until all your monthly levels are marked out nicely and tracked nicely. From there on, you go to the weekly time frame. If you go to the weekly time frame, you will notice how that these monthly levels are sitting nicely. You can see how the 1650 level actually influenced the market there. You can see how that, eight, that 1750 level actually gave us a clean reversal pattern there to the absolute T. From there, you can pull out your FIB. So we're now tracking the weekly time frame levels. So on the weekly, we use this tool called the Fibonacci tool. You can get it right there. Like if you click there on this one over there, sorry, click there and uh, scroll through just to maybe make sure that you find the fib tool. Uh, I haven't clicked that side in a long time, honestly. So you click there, third one from the top, people not your retracement tool. 
drop from line to line, support line to resistance line. Make sure that this is exactly to the T. And from there, whatever level you have on the 50%, that will be your weekly. Double tap on that, go to coordinates, round it off. If you look at that, that will be 1700 per ounce. And the 1700 go to style, make sure that it's 1700 per ounce. And that should be on the left, because then this is on the weekly. So all the weekly levels should be on the left. Make sure that you lock that line after doing that. And you can drag this tool to the next level, to the next level. Make sure that the dots are on the lines. You can see that dot there. You can see that dot there is literally sitting on the line. On the 50%, that is where you draw your line. And you can go to settings. Make sure that you round off 1800. Go to style. Type that. That's 1800 per ounce. You can even write per ounce. Uh, make sure it's on the left. And after that, make sure to lock every single line. And you can do that across different levels. So now moving on to a step deeper. So we've actually learned, we've just learned how to draw the weeklies and the monthlies. So the monthlies, you have to track one level of resistance and one level of support. Then that level must never be over a thousand pips. So this is when you measure out the distance. It must not be over a thousand pips. Should be a thousand pips and below, preferably 500. But on the gold, I prefer to have a thousand max. I will give you that level. But I prefer that on currencies, you've got a maximum of 500 across support and resistance. Make sure that distance is exactly 500 which then makes the weekly range at 250, which would then make half of these levels. If you really mark out the distance between this level and this level, you'd find that that's the exact same distance from this level to that level. I just need to make sure that this is accurate. You, you'll find that this is the same distance. So you must make sure that you use your FIB tools correctly Make sure that the FIB tool gives you that 50% mark for your weeklies. And from there, you go to daily, all right? So this is from the monthly, the weekly, and the daily. So you literally track everything down from the monthly. From the monthly, you go back to the daily, from, to the weekly. From the weekly, you then come to the daily. Everything must be in sequence. So on the daily, what you are looking for on the daily is you're looking at using the close and the open of candles, sometimes the wicks. I will explain how that works, but mostly you're using the close and open of bodies. I prefer to basically mark out. So I'm going to be using this level and we will be looking at how this level then affects the market in the future. So I'm going to use the close and open of the two bodies. You can see how in the future this level, so this, let me just annotate this actually so this is daily level so this will be the daily level that we have 1678 you don't need to round off the daily levels just draw it and mark it nicely on your charts so this will then be the daily level that we have you can see that open and close of these two candles put a line there horizontal ray line and you can see how then the market was affected by the markets in the future. So if you go to the smaller time frame, you will see how you would have gotten beautiful entries on this level. So a close above this level, retest and the market just rallies to the upside. You can even draw the four hour levels as well. So on the H4, you can even find and identify levels of importance using previous highs. Look at how they came to test that previous high to the T on this level you'd find that this area would have been a beautiful area of entries on the smaller time frame um, let me just use this box so let's go to the h1 to basically understand how this level would have been a beautiful level of entry look at that this was, this was absolutely phenomenal you would have gotten beautiful entries over there even on this level as well you would have gotten clean entries on that level going up. Also, these levels are important to note and mark down because 
these levels will help you with entries and can also help you with the accuracy to actually get proper entries on the markets. So you trace your levels from the daily, go down to the H4, then on the hourly, going down to the 30 minute, you're going to be looking for entries. So it's important that you understand how to draw these in these levels. So this is how we draw the levels from the weekly, the monthly and the daily. If you don't understand anything, you can repeat the videos to see how I've basically been tracking these levels, how I've been drawing these levels to basically understand how to draw these levels. Let me take up a different chart. For example, I'm going to take up a USD pair, do the same thing. Uh, I don't know which pair to take. Let me just take the Euro dollar, all right? Let me remove drawing tools, go down, go up to the monthly. On the monthly, you're obviously going to be drawing your lines. So from the line chart, you can clearly use, you can use a level that you can clearly read. You don't have to go to the part. You don't have to go far. You can basically drop a level of resistance where you can see like a, a, a level of sensitivity go to this like 1.20 let's see how that plays out okay that's a bit uh, down maybe let's say 1.1 let's see how that plays out okay 1.1 does really play out if you look at how then the market behaves even in the future from this level to that level you can basically use 1.1 as a proper level go back to your lines and then from there maybe draw another level at the top there to basically see so 1.1 to 1.15 let's see 1.14.50 basically let's see let's see 14.50 okay that's a proper level lock these lines lock this line as well go back to your candlestick chart to see how the market literally sits with the candles you can see how we've spiked through that level how we can spike through that 1.1 level from there, you mark out the distance, make sure that it's less than a thousand pips. So from there to there, this is 350 pips. So this is, this is fine. This is fine for me. I can work with 350. From there, I can just copy and paste that distance, draw a line there. So from there, you mark out a line there. Put a line there. Sorry, put a line. And then uh, mark up, round off that line. So that's 1.18, all right? So after that, you lock that line. So you can see how easy this is. This is easy peasy. From there, draw a line as well on the support level and round off that line. So that's 0 0.75. So lock that line. From there, don't forget to mark out, annotate the monthlies, put a strip on it, so put a strip there. Make sure that you, you literally do it the same way I did on the first video because then on this video, I'm literally like rushing to discuss other things. So I'm just going to be like brushing up, but make sure that you use uh, the same the same length of these level of these rectangles. Make sure that you drag it like to the right, to the far right. Make sure you drag it to the far left as well. I don't want to be seeing small lines like a line that starts here and ends there i don't want that you can see my line fills up the whole screen so i don't want that zoom in to see how these lines are sitting make sure that you've got very thin lines and then from there Control c Control v lock and then drag this one to the next level Control c Control v lock drag to the next level so you can you can just keep on doing this and practicing until you actually get it right i'm actually not trying to make this video long which is why i'm actually rushing from there go down to the weekly time frame on the weekly obviously use your fib tool so resistance to support so monthly resistance to monthly support important to, to note that monthly resistance to monthly support and then from there draw a line in the middle Put it there on the 50 so that is 1.09248 so i would rather just make it 1.95 okay that's too far let's maybe try again so so that's 25 actually so that's 25 beautiful lock and then from there you can drag do the same thing to the next level drag this make sure that the zero percent and the hundred percent are sitting on line to line 
line to line beautiful draw on the mid range from there you've got 12 7 you, you can see 12 7 5 you can see 12 7 4 5 or 12 7 50 whatever you want to do but that should be a rounded off number that can make logical sense to you don't forget to annotate the line these are monthlies these are weeklies so how i would do this is i would have um an annotation there and probably say monthly resistance because that's at the top so that's monthly resistance at 1.100 right and then make sure that that annotation is actually on the right don't forget that actually on the right so that's monthly resistance at 1.1 and then we've got monthly support at 1.07 500 right 107 500 sorry and that should be on the right as well so make sure that you do that every single time and then this would obviously be that weekly uh, resistance in this case so that's weekly resistance because obviously it's trending above it it's actually a line above the price where price is trading right now so that's 1.0925 right so uh, i'm happy with that so this is how i would then trace my levels on the monthly from this i can then zoom into the daily from the daily then i can try and identify daily levels that we have on the daily i'm going to take up a level that i can clearly see open and close of this body look at how the market has actually been pinning through that level even on this level open and close of these two bodies look at how the market has been spiking around this level and if you look at the overall picture you can see that you do have a true a sideway moving market from here go down to the four hourly look at how the h4 would have given you proper entries proper entries don't refine these lines as well from the daily don't do not refine them because this is these lines are stronger from the daily so you don't actually want to refine them on the h4 leave them as they are leave them as they are don't refine them because you're using the open and the close of the bodies remember that this is how we're we're actually monitoring daily closures around about these levels so if you basically like refine it you won't be able to see how daily candles close around these levels for you to get the next possible moves on the market so leave them as they are so this video has been covering how to draw monthlies weeklies and dailies again if you don't understand anything you're more than welcome to keep on repeating these videos until you actually get everything into your head i will see you in the next video